Willkommen zum letzten Talk von Jugend Hakt heute. Welcome to the last talk of Jugend Hakt in Berlin. This lightning stream is the final one. Jasper is going to talk to us about Flutter. And yeah, I'll let him get right to it. Okay, hello everybody. Today I will introduce a software development kit called Flutter. Um, my talk is called Non-Native Native Development. Well, but uh, what is non-native native development? That's what you do with Flutter. And I will try to introduce how it works. Um, yeah, Flutter is a so-called software development kit. Means it is not a language, nor an development environment, uh, but it's a kind of extension for the language Dart. Dart is a programming language, uh, and it cannot be executed on any system directly. But the big advantage of Dart is it can be cross-compiled to almost every other language. So if you have a Dart file, it can be compiled to C++ code, it can be cross-compiled to JavaScript, it can be compiled to uh, Java, it can be compiled to Swift. So it actually runs on every operating system. Um, yeah, let's just start. Um, if you want to install Flutter, it's quite easy. You just need to download uh, a zip package, uh, extract it, and run it. Um, and they offer a great, uh, Flutter offers a great uh, amount of uh, layout stuff. Let's check it out. Um, yeah. They offer an online uh, catalog of so-called components. And yeah, you can just write the layout within your code. So um, yeah, let's have an example. Um, mouse. Oh. I hate this place. Here, for example, you have a Flutter uh, project open. And as you can see, it's actually a Dart file. You can see it in the, uh, in the extension over there. Um, but you can see the layout within the, f in the program code. That's quite unusual. Most of programming language have a separation between the program uh, code, the actual source code, and the layout. You can see it in iOS, mobile applications, uh, in Qt applications for Linux desktops, or in Android Droid applications. You always have, usually, XML files containing the layout, and whatever language containing the source code. And Flutter, it's different. It's just, you can create a class, it's object-oriented, and within that class, you can just write the code of the class and the layout. So it's, yeah, merged. It's quite unusual. Here, for example, you see an image within the, and just uh, above the image, there's some source code uh, of the actual program. Um, yeah. One moment. Yeah, back to the slide. Um, Another uh, yeah, property of Flutter is the separation between uh, different kinds of widgets. Widgets are layout components like a box, a button, uh, an app bar, a menu, and so on. These are called widgets. And there, there's a separation between stateful and stateless widgets. Stateful widgets, well, they have a state. And stateless widgets do not have a state. That's very important for the performance of, of Flutter, because if you change a variable in the source code, let's, let's uh, call a variable counter. If you increase a counter, it tells the class to which the variable belongs. OK, I changed, so I need to uh, rebuild this class, if it's a stateful class. So as soon as you change a property of a, an object, the object will be re-rendered on the screen. 
uh, compared to that, the stateless widgets, they just get the information from the upper widget, from the parent element, that it is rebuilt, and they will just be recreated. Uh, and so you can implement, for example, if you have a text changing after, I don't know, 15 seconds, it will just re-render the, the text, but not the whole application. Um, yeah, and as I already said, the design is made in the code. Um, yeah, so far, um, and why did I say non-native native? Well, that sounds, it's cross-compiled to some things, sounds like something like React native or I don't know what, um, but it's somehow different. Um, here you should see something about, something about the ar architecture of Flutter, uh, you see uh, at the very top, there's this. Uh, there's a framework. The framework is Flutter, and the framework offers uh, information about the layout. These co these so-called widgets for design, for example, Android-style design, so material design, uh, iOS-style design, uh, the rendering library, how the thi things are displayed on the screen, and so on. And below that, there's the engine. The engine is written in C and C++, but that's un uh, unnecessary. And the engine is uh, the part of the application, the, the part of the software development kit translating all this stuff from this Dart code into the native language. Uh, means, for example, if I want to run the application uh, in JavaScript as a web application, uh, the engine will translate the Dart code and the Flutter layout stuff into HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Uh, yeah, and then, sh of course, there's interaction with the platforms themselves as possible. For example, you can run, uh, you, you can bind Kotlin or Java code on an Android application to Dart or, uh, I don't know, Objective-C or uh, Swift code on iOS. Uh, means there's a, uh, yeah, there's an interface between the Flutter code, the Flutter VM, and uh, the platform. That's already the, uh, the biggest difference between these tools like React Native, JavaScript, and Electron, and Flutter. Um, currently, I think React Native is the and Xamarin are the most used cross-platform frameworks for mobile development. Uh, they, uh, React Native uses JavaScript and adds native layout components of uh, the operating system. So, for example, if you have uh, a button on Android, it uses a standard button of Android, and if you ha uh, run the same application on iOS, React Native uh, shows a native button of iOS. That's something Flutter does fully different. The layout is not at all native, so even on Android, if you use Android design, it's non-native layout, so actually foreign. But that offers the advantage that the layout looks exactly the same on all platforms means it's quite easy to develop, and as they follow, anyway, follow the guidelines of uh, material design and uh, iOS, Apple design guidelines, it looks anyway quite good on most of the mobile platforms and on desktop platforms anyway. Um, yeah. But as I already explained, this stateful and stateless stuff uh, makes it quite performant, and that's why, even if it's uh, if the layout and, yeah, I don't know what, the engine and everything that, that is not native Android libraries or native iOS libraries or native Qt libraries or whatever, um, there's no loss of performance. Compared to React Native, for example, or Electron on desktops, um, it takes, well, at first takes 200 megabyte of RAM just for a JavaScript engine to start, and afterwards JavaScript code is uh, executed. That's very unperformant. And as Flutter code 
so Dart code is being translated to C code or uh, JavaScript code or anything. Uh, it always uh, runs native code on the platform. And that's why I call it non-native native, because the layout is non-native, but the code is native. And that makes it much more performant uh, than, for example, uh, JavaScript or, yeah. And, well, y another option would be writing different code for all platforms, but it would, that would just cost hours of time or weeks of time, uh, and that's why I see a big advantage in Flutter for cross-platform development. Currently, the supported platforms are web, web apps, um, Android, iOS, Linux desktop, Windows, and Mac OS. So actually, most of platforms, and some people even reached at running Flutter on FreeBSD. Um, yeah, that's a part of the intro, um, the presentation. Um, yeah, let's have a look at an example. Whoop. I just need to change some display settings. Wait a moment, please. Yeah, it seems to work. Um, Uh, here I have a Flutter, Flutter project, uh, and it's just one single file. It's a file call, called main.dart. Let's have a uh, look at it. At the beginning, we import some libraries that's unnecessary, uh, and afterwards, we have a function called main. As in many other languages, you have function main, which is executed. And there it tells we run an app, climate app. This climate app is uh, defined below. It's a class extending a so-called stateless widget. It means it doesn't have a state. It just uh, is being rebuilt as soon as the parent uh, element changes. Um, in that case, it doesn't matter. At the first, we extend the, the, uh, the element material app. We offer some design, and we give it a home page. And the home page is defined below, the second class we defined, and that's a stateful widget. And here, a variable is defined, and this means that's the state. It means as soon as this variable is changed, this part of the application will rebuild. So for example, I can just directly write this variable into a text field, and you do not have to pay attention on event listeners from J JavaScript or if button is clicked or if text is changed because it automatically resets the text as soon as it's changed. Um, yeah, and that's this big advantage of Flutter. Uh, I would like, I would now like to just to run it once. Um, you can do it from comment prompt or from uh, your development environment, I prefer it from comment prompt. Yeah. Flutter offers plugins for most for the most common uh, code editors. For example, uh, you can run it on Android Studio, uh, you can run it uh, in Visual Studio Code, you can run in Xcode, so it works on most platforms and most code editors. And here we just have the result. It's a quite pretty user interface. But we didn't pay lots of attention for uh, design. So with some few lines of code, just one file is enough for creating such an application. It supports touch on every platform. It, uh, it is accessible, for ex uh, important for the talk today at uh, 3 p.m. It was about accessibility. Uh, yeah, and. That's an example. I could run it on a smartphone too. I could run it in web too. I could run it everywhere. Um, that was my presentation. I hope you got some interesting information about Flutter and you liked it. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Okay, sorry. We had a battery failure on the first microphone. 
first. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I downloaded Flutter, uh, but couldn't um, actually run it. Uh, I wonder, it's, uh, we sh you said we need to use Dart programming language to run Flutter, so uh, how to start Dart? Uh, Dart is similar to uh, which language? What do you say about Dart? Um, well, first of all, you said you downloaded Flutter, but something didn't work. Uh, Dart is directly included into the Flutter package, so you don't need to care about Dart. Um, Dart language, well, in my opinion, it's a kind of mix of JavaScript, uh, Java, and C. So it's quite, yeah, it's quite easy to uh, get used to Flutter because it has similarities to most of other languages you know. And as it's, it's quite flexible, so no uh, very strong syntax, it's quite easy to uh, get used to it. And anyway, um, the Flutter community offers quite good documentation uh, how to ch uh, move to Flutter from other uh, programming languages. Okay, another question? Thank you for your presentation, first of all. Do you think it is correct to use Flutter at high-scaled project? Uh, yeah, I think so, because, for example, uh, Google uses Flutter for um, their Google AdSense app, so the application uh, providing all the information and all the payment for uh, people earning money by Google Ads, or uh, don't ask me what. Um, so yeah, it's quite usable for high scale, I think, because it's quite performant and quite easy to uh, create an application for many operating systems. Thank you. Okay, we have another question. Uh, you didn't explicitly mention it, but I take it that it's an open source uh, project, right? Yeah, it's open sourced. Uh, it's open source. Uh, everyone can contribute to this project. Uh, it was introduced by Google in 2018, but doesn't contain any uh, specific code of Google, so it's really library software. Um, yeah, and the development is quite fast. I, there was just an update to mo uh, today uh, at lunchtime. <laughs> More questions about Flutter. Okay, I think there's no question. So this is the end for today. Thank you, Jasper, for your talk. Welcome. Thank you, everybody who was watching the stream. Yeah, I can clap. You can clap. <laughs> <laughs>